Cather lived with the editor Edith Lewis for 38 years, but unfortunately only one letter Cather wrote to her has survived. But it's a very tender, lovely letter, even if it is just about astronomy. I am sitting in your room, looking out on the woods you know so well. So far, everything delights me. I am ashamed of my appetite for food, and as for sleep, I had forgotten that sleeping can be an active and very strong physical pleasure. It can. It has been for all of three nights. I wake up now and then, saturated with the pleasure of breathing clear mountain air, not cold, just chill air, of being up high with all the woods below me sleeping too, in still white moonlight. It's a grand feeling. One hour from now, out of your window, I shall see a sight unparalleled, Jupiter and Venus both shining in the golden rosy sky and both in the west, she not very far above the horizon, and he about midway between the zenith and the silvery lady planet. From 5.30 to 6.30, they are of a superb splendor, deepening in color every second in a still daylight sky guiltless of other stars, the moon not up and the sun gone down behind Gap Mountain, those two alone in the whole vault of heaven. It lasts so about an hour, did last night. Then the lady, so silvery still, slips down into the clear, rose-colored glow to be near the departed sun, and Imperial Jupiter hangs there alone. He goes down about 8.30. Surely it reminds one of Dante's eternal wheels. I can't but believe that all that majesty and all that beauty, those fated and unfailing appearances and exits, are something more than mathematics and horrible temperatures. If they are not, then we are the only wonderful things because we can wonder. From the archives of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm Andy Jewell.